Resistors, the unremarkable passive. Hi, I'm Electric Guy, and this is an introductory video, which is the first in a series of videos that will be created and uploaded as time goes on. Resistors. All people designing with or hacking electronics for fun know of the lowly resistor. The resistor comes in many sizes, shapes, and types, and they all have their own little quirks to deal with. What makes a resistor a resistor? There's an electrical property called cognitivity that all materials have and is represented by the Greek symbol called sigma. The easier it is to push electrons through a material, the higher its conductivity is, or the lower its resistivity is. Now resistivity is the inverse of conductivity and is represented by the Greek symbol called rho. The harder it is to push electrons through a material, the higher the resistivity is, or the lower its conductivity is. Materials that are easy to push electrons through are known as conductors, while materials that are hard to push electrons through are known as insulators. Conductors tend to have a lot of free electrons available, while insulators have a shortage of free electrons. Now that we have a basis for defining resistance, we can move ahead. Resistance is a measurement across a bounded physical quantity of bulk material along the path of applied voltage. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but put another way, if you take a chunk of material and connect two conductors on either side of it, the measurement of the resistance of that chunk will depend on the material conductivity, the average cross-sectional area that the current is flowing through, and the mean length between the conductors connected. So resistance is dependent on where you make your electrical connections to complete a circuit. Resistance as an electrical quantity is represented by the Greek symbol omega, which has a unit called ohm associated with it. Put more formally, resistance is equal to the resistivity rho times the length of material divided by the cross-sectional area of that material. If you have a material formed as a uniform cylinder or any other shape of fixed length, this calculation becomes straightforward. If you have a non-uniform volume of this material, the calculation requires a lot more advanced mathematics to calculate the resistance. So now we know what resistance is and how you can figure it out from the bulk material properties. Let's take a look at the resistors that we tra or traditionally see in uh, electronics today. In the past, resistors came almost exclusively in a leaded package. They took lots of space up and were prone to physical damage. Those who've been around a bit longer would have learned the magic decoder ring for leaded resistors known as the electronic color code developed back in the early 1920s. Resistance, tolerance, temperature stability, all could be listed on a resistor by simply placing bands of color on them. It provided a quick method to identify a resistor within a circuit. This, however, was not without its problems. Overheating, dirt, physical damage could all obscure the information contained in the color bands, leading to difficulty in identifying a component. The resistance code was arranged as a four or more color band code with the first band representing the first significant digit of the component value. The second band of the color code represented the first decimal place of the component value. If the resistor had a tolerance that was better than 5%, the third band could represent the second decimal place of the component value. Otherwise, it represented the multiplier of the value listed. The multiplier represented a power of 10 value that was used to set the decimal point location of the coded value. Additional bands after the multiplier band represented tolerance, temperature stability, and reliability if it was used for military purposes. Now let's look at the types of resistors available. You can have leaded types, surface mounted types, bolded types, film types, wire types, and so on when it comes to resistors. Each type has an application where they excel in and an application where they fail in. So let's review some of the types of resistors beginning with leaded or bolted types. 
Lead types were the predominant resistor used in the electronics industry up until the mid to late 1980s when surface mount uh, components began to make more readily adopted uh, inroads into industry. If leaded components are not used correctly, they are prone to mechanical damage through prolonged shock and vibration since their mass is large and their size is large compared to the surface mount counterparts. Electrically, they were not as suitable for high frequency either since their longer lead lengths required careful surfing design to accommodate the uh, increased inductance into the circuit function. In some power resistors, the construction of the resistive elements contributed excessive amounts of inductance, making them unusable for high-frequency uh, applications like resistive uh, current sensing and PWM fires. An example of large inductance caused by the resistive element construction can be seen in wire-wound power resistors, which form their resistive elements as a helical wound element that mimics a coreless air inductor. Some applications where the large inductance plays no significant role in circuit operation is voltage clamping or heating applications. Voltage clamping is commonly found in several applications where regenerative braking for precise motion control can raise internal supply voltages to dangerous levels, which might cause component failure. An electronic switch is used to connect the internal supply voltage to a power dump resistor to prevent an over voltage condition from occurring. If the servo does not have the capability to return the energy back to the mains, then it must use a power dump resistor to dissipate the regenerative energy from the motors. So moving on to our next resistor type, we will take a quick look at real stats or potentiometers. Potentiometers, or POTS for short, are resistors that have a film or helical wound resistive element arranged such that a wiper can slide easily down the length, contacting different points of the resistive element depending on where it's moved to. Now remembering from earlier that the resistance is the physical quantity between the two electrical contact points where resistance equals rho times length over area. The resistance is proportional to length. If you move the wiper along the resistive element, the resistance between the two contacts is either increasing or decreasing as the mean length increases or decreases. In the past, POTS were the primary way to trim and control analog signals. As digital age began to take over from the analog world, POTS were seen as the weak link in designs because they were prone to dirt and mechanical damage. Probably everyone's had an old audio amplifier with a dirty volume pot that caused the audio to crackle because of dirt and required periodic cleaning to get rid of it. Nowadays, cell phones, personal media players, etc. all use digital methods in place of traditional analog pot to control volume. However, in low-end applications, pots still play a role, though their days are probably numbered and will eventually be fully replaced by digital methods. In the late 1980s, the surface mounted resistor began to overtake leaded resistors as manufacturers retooled with high speed pick and place lines. The benefits of surface mount designs were realized in the form of smaller electronics with better repeatability and reliability. As time moved on, other personal electronics morphed into smartphones and tablets of today. The size of resistors decreased dramatically to allow the size reductions being demanded. From the 1206 resistor package size, we migrated down to an 0201 resistor package size, which was 28 times smaller and only could be soldered by hand with a microscope. To further increase component densities and manage inductances and capacitances, printed circuit manufacturers began to offer embedded resistors within the PCB. So what should we know about surface mount resistors that is different from the past leader components? First off, there is many different types of surface mount resistors to choose from. Components that have a high power surge rating, low inductance, high thermal conductivity, low temperature coefficients, thick film, thin films, metal element, laser trim, the list goes on. Depending on your application, you must wade through the specifications of surface mount resistors to select that which meets your requirements the best with the least compromises. If you're choosing a resistor for, for small signal applications where temperature can vary greatly, you probably want a component that has a low temperature coefficient and a low tolerance number 1% or better, depending on the specifications you're trying to achieve. If you're choosing a resistor for power applications where surge power may be high, you probably don't care so much about low temperature coefficients or low tolerance number. 
In fact, laser trim low tolerance resistors of 1% or better have very poor power storage ratings because of how the resistor film is trimmed to increase the accuracy of the resistor. Places where high power surge ratings may be required is in in-rush current limiting resistors that see un uncharged capacitances during a hard switch event. Where you have current sense applications, having a low temperature coefficient is very important to reduce the inaccuracies that would occur as a current sense resistor heated up under load. Other issues with surface mount resistors can be summed up as mechanical failures or manuf manufacturing difficulties. The substrate and end terminations are prone to cracking in the presence of PCB board flex. Additional problems with getting the correct solder fillets on the end terminations also affects the reliability and the number of cold solder joints or opens that can occur. Once these issues are understood, surface mount resistors can be one of the most reliable passive components on a PCB assembly. Okay, moving on to the last group of resistors, we will briefly mention wire and film types. Wire and film resistors are normally used in heating applications, though wire type resistors have been known to be used in current sensing applications. Creating a wire resistor is as simple as selecting a length of wire with a specific resistivity and cross-sectional area. Figuring out the length is as simple as figuring out what resistance you want and dividing the resistivity by it times the cross-sectional area of the wire that you've selected. This allows the creation of accept acceptable precision resistors of high current capacity at low cost. In cheap motor controllers, nichrome wire is used to form high current capacity sensor resistors which can be used to sense the magnitude of, motor co uh, magnitude of current flowing through a motor or a power return. Film resistors are the opposite of wire types and they come in many shapes and sizes. The key difference is their high mechanical flexibility compared to the other resistor technologies. Film resistors are primarily used in heating applications such as heated seats. This concludes the first introductory video of the series on passives. Future videos on capacitors and inductors will follow. Thank you for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up.